to the words, that's fine. Well, we can gently open your eyes if you also want to see some of the slides. So I did have a look over at the lunch break. So um, there is, for example, um, the hornblower that I was mentioning this morning, which is one of the suttas where the Brahmaviharas are mentioned. And that's in Samyutta Nikaya 42.8. So I have it on a little piece of paper here, so I'll just read it um, over at the reception desk or whatever you want to call that for the person who has asked the question. So that's just one of the examples where um, we hear about the mind being purified through meditation and then we use this purified, calm, bright mind to um, reflect upon those four beautiful qualities and then to radiate them out in all four directions. But what the person was referring to um, probably is the chanting that Amarwati Monastery does. So it is in the Amarwati um, Chanting Book, Volume 1, page 42 to 44. So you have the Pali formula there and also the English translation for the person who asked, so you can find it online. And also some people were writing, taking notes from the slides, so I'm very happy to um, have the PDFs available for whoever is interested. So probably the easiest is if I just share it with Bobby and then uh, he can share it with whoever is interested. So you don't have to kind of think you're going to miss something. Because when we try to listen really hard, it actually doesn't go in. <laughs> because we're trying too hard. Or when we are thinking too hard, it doesn't go in. So we also want to be kind of receptive. Um, during the process of hearing the Dhamma and letting the Dhamma sink into the heart like seeds. And those seeds will blossom and sprout and grow whenever the time and the environment is, is, is right for it. So this afternoon we are going to have two more Brahma hours, two more Adi latitudes. And after the first one we'll do a little guided meditation again. But like this morning, it's just a guidance into meditation, so you can uh, meditate um, quietly afterwards or go and do some walking meditation when it is more appropriate. Then we do the second session at 3 o'clock, 3, 3.30 roughly, and then we were planning to have another guided meditation, but um, the tea break is at 3.30. So um, you can go downstairs where we had lunch, and there will be something on offer for you to have a little break. But of course, you can sit and walk during that time as well, uh, and just have, have a little break, or not have a break, whatever feels appropriate. And then we meet for another Q&A at 4 o'clock, 4.15 here, for 45 minutes, and then we do the final later meditation at the end, also remembering the person um, who is in the hospital and who needs some support. Okay, so that's a bit of a program. Uh, let's focus again now on the third um, of the four ideal attitudes that I called joy. And uh, actually I had another picture there initially, which was a bit kind of more colorful. And it didn't really fit in with the other three pictures, so I was trying to find something which is quite simple and just, just black and white and maybe a little bit of red. And this one uh, is what caught my attention. So someone high-fiving someone else. <laughs> and when we high-five high someone, basically, it means that we are rejoicing and we are telling someone, well done. They often do that with little kids as well, you know, when they do something well, they just put the hand out and they do high five. These days they do fist bumps maybe as well, but anyway, I thought it was something um, which encapsulated what um, Mudita is about. Oops. Oh no. Mm, I'll be right back. <laughs>
که رکاریم به نازمت برای میگم سره پشت رو هم از described 
Epikarya Kakya, if I pronounce that right, but that literally means uh, rejoicing in the disgrace of someone else. So this concept is actually not just a German concept. Sometimes people say, oh, you know, it's the Germans, they know what Schadenfreude is, but here it actually shows it's in many other um, languages you find it. And of course, the defilements, where do they live? <laughs> they don't live in a language. <laughs> they live, live within ourselves, obscuring the purity of the heart. So that is basically um, where we are starting from. The opposite of rejoicing is this schadenfreude. So if we're feeling good when others feel bad. And envy is when we are thinking that we should be having something that someone else has and we are envious. We want to have it rather than them. Rather than realizing that if it is really something good, if it's really something wholesome, the more of that is in the world, the more and the better it is for everyone involved, me as well. The other one is jealousy. I often get those two mixed up and I really had to kind of do a bit of research. So envy is thinking, oh, why don't I have what someone else has? And jealousy is when you are afraid that someone will steal what you already have. So they're very closely related. So I'm afraid you will steal my friend or my partner or my possessions. And scarcity is one of those um, concepts that is closely related. So we think there isn't enough of something to go around. And because of this feeling of scarcity, we start to kind of chase out after certain things. And, but if they're spiritual things, then of course this can't happen at all because we can't have too much of virtuous qualities in the world, for example. And the other things we can still share as well, and we shall as well. We can have cynicism or pessimism. Catchphrase here is, they all just think of themselves. It's all bound to get worse or fail anyway. Real joy doesn't really exist. So we don't want to get involved or rejoice in anything because we are too pessimistic or too, uh, too much um, cynicism is around then sometimes it might be some kind of fear of exposure. I didn't know what, what kind of title I should use for this one, but the catchphrase is, it might look odd or it might feel vulnerable if I allow the joy that is happening outside of me to touch my heart and to be moved by it. So that might be happening for some of you, that even though something is beautiful, even though you are moved by something which is beautiful, you just are afraid to express that. So we sometimes have people who come and um, share with us in the interviews that they have tears that flow during meditation. And I sometimes ask them about you know, what kind of tears they are. Are they happy tears or are they sad tears? And sometimes they're not so sure even. <laughs> so if it's happy tears, for sure, it's no problem. But even if it's sad tears or if it's I don't know tears, it's an emotion that gets released and if you're in a safe environment and then I feel it's perfectly okay to also let those um, feelings actually arise and um, give them a bit of space so they can have a little uh, life of their own and especially with beautiful emotions such as these ones like mudita rejoicing. Um, Hyper-positivity, of course, is the other one, <laughs> where we think everything is great and everything is great all the time, and if we get things a bit like over the top, or if we even get into a kind of like flattering other people, um, that is not genuine anymore. That is not really rejoicing in something we genuinely feel happy and joyful about. I think that is in there, yes, flattery and empty nicety niceties, you're the best driver, whatever, cook partner or whatever, and we just kind of say it, <laughs> but we don't quite mean it. So it's better to rejoice in things that we really feel are touching our hearts. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be appreciative, but we don't just we don't push it too far. 
to being too exuberant and rejoicing in fleeting pleasures and fleeting gains um, that I mentioned a little bit before already. So let's uh, see that we don't get too caught up in that. It's better and more wholesome and has more benefit if it's something spiritual rather than something worldly. But we can rejoice in these things as well. So what does that mean? Sorry, so there are all, all of them on one slide. But um, as I said, I'll share it, that's the easiest. So how might Medita look like? So it's the recognition and the appreciation. So we are seeing beauty, and we are seeing the beauty within ourselves, and we are seeing the beauty outside in the world. There is so much beauty in this world. But very often we are so busy and overwhelmed, um, or we just have a fault-finding mind that is not available for all these things. You will notice that when you meditate more, and when your mind is peaceful and calm, you will recognize and appreciate the simple pleasures of life. Um, then we savor, like we savor a piece of food, so we make sure that the joy has a space in our heart, and that it can actually sink in, that we can taste its flavor, that we can feel it fully, and that takes a bit of time. So when you have your favorite food, Hopefully, you're not rushed and you just eat it that really quickly because then it's gone. <laughs> so you savor it. You get the most out of it. You get the flavor out of the food and with um, rejoicing with mudita, you get the flavor out of whatever wholesome thing you are engaging with. Especially in meditation, that's an important thing to savor the good to save the joy. So um, we have respect, we have ins inspiration, um, that we want to actually um, develop and grow those beautiful qualities within ourselves. So we get inspired, we get happy for other people, but we don't stop there. We actually take it a step further and create the same things within our, within our own hearts. Um, Joy and gratitude, so we express our gladness, we express thankful, thankfulness um, freely and naturally. It's one of those things that the Buddha said is very, very rare in the world to find people who are grateful. So many things to be grateful for. And then the sheer generosity of heart, where we just wish for all beings that they may be happy, that they may be well, that they may be successful, and that whenever they have that success, that it may last, that they can maintain it, that it doesn't, um, that it doesn't get lost too quickly. And we rejoice along with them, so I'm happy that you are happy, could be the catchphrase there. I think that might be the slides for this one. And yes, that's all of them together. All right, yes, we do have a little kind of mantra. Um, that was interesting. You know, when I was doing a bit of research and trying to get these slides together, for all the other three Brahma Viharas, there was some information out there where you could have a reflection or a mantra to use. Um, but the first one I picked from Bhattibhuna Ratana about Metta, and then um, Karuna and Upeka, I used um, Christine Neff, um, a researcher, but I couldn't find anything from Udita. So I thought, okay, I'll have to make my own. <laughs> so, Mudita Mantra. Life has many moments of happiness, beauty and joy. May I be able to recognize and appreciate them, even if they seem insignificant or small. May I cultivate inspiration, joy, delight, gratitude in my heart. When others are virtuous, successful, happy or healthy, may I rejoice and be happy with them. I think delight is a really 
last word that I think Ajahn Brahm also is starting to use more and more when he is teaching, but also when he is teaching about meditation. So we can delight in the relaxation and the joy which arises when we do the body scan. We can delight when the mind slows down and becomes calm and peaceful. And we can delight in our breath. Ajahn Brahm has this um, kind of way of describing one stage in meditation where the breath becomes beautiful, the beautiful breath. And when the beautiful breath arises, that's when we delight in being with that breath, like we delight in something joyful we can see outside, where we delight in someone's company. And it's a, it's a very important um, step in meditation to learn to delight in the beautiful. Okay, I think that's all I have for this one. So let's um, switch to meditation. And Pandit Chandra will be guiding us. We actually have quite a bit of time this time. So we just do guidance into meditation. And the next session will be at 3 o'clock. So we have some time afterwards to practice um, just whatever feels comfortable, sitting or walking, or just, you know, finding a quiet corner and having a sip of water or whatever is, is required at that time. If you feel like walking, you can please walk. If you feel like sitting quietly, this also you can also do so, right? because um, yeah, you can practice in many different ways. Uh, but sometimes you just finish eating a full meal, and you feel like walking, please do some walking. But if you want to rest the tummy, then it's a nice time to do some meditation. Okay, so we will we will sit quietly, uncomfortably, and we gently close our eye. With our eye closed, we can quickly do a body scanning. So gently bring your awareness to your face. Then we always start off either from my head or our feet. So I like to start on my head. So we relax our top of our head. Then we move down to our face. And we relax our face. Relax our eyes. Relax 